Welcome to Now, I'm your host, Curtis Parody, bringing you the news happening in the world right now. Well, I hope you all had yourself a great weekend because, well, just think about it, only five more days till the next one. One great mechanical device, though, that could help you count down the days till the weekend is a watch. But what about a smartwatch? If you don't know what a smartwatch is, then don't feel bad. They're a pretty new class of product. A smartwatch is a watch that connects to your smartphone via Bluetooth. It then shows notifications, can control your music playback, and even shows you who's calling you before you pick up your phone. They're cool little devices, and the most popular one being the Pebble smartwatch. That is in very, very high demand. I personally just got notice over the weekend that mine would be shipping, so that makes me personally happy. But if you can wait, you might want to check out Apple's iWatch when it launches this fall. Rumors are swirling in the tech world that Apple is developing its own smartwatch. Dubbed the iWatch by fans, this device will allow you to control your iPhone from your wrist. Supposedly, it will run a version of iOS, but for a smaller screen, and it's in testing right now. The problem they're currently having with the device is battery life. It's only able to stay charged for two to three days, which is pretty bad for a watch. Mind you, I personally have a hard time keeping my iPhone charged for a full day, so I consider two to three days awesome. At the moment, though, these are still just rumors, but with the amount of news coming out about it in the past few weeks, it looks like it's a pretty strong one, at least stronger than the rumors about Apple working on its own television. So if you're thinking about picking up a smartwatch in the future, you may want to keep Apple in mind. Or of course, you could attempt to get yourself a Pebble smartwatch. So from the watch to the device that it connects to, let's talk about smartphones. We've all heard the nasty stories about people racking up bills for data roaming charges. Heck, I racked up one once, but it was nothing compared to this person in the next story. A man from British Columbia is facing a data roaming charge of, wait for it, $22,000. Yes, that's right, $22,000. Thousand. That's more than my car cost. A man and his family were on vacation in Mexico when his son became sick. To make him feel better, the man gave his son his iPhone. Thinking nothing of it, he left his son to play some games while he stayed in the room. Over the next three days, though, the kid racked up a huge overage bill. So you might be thinking, because I certainly did, how much data do you get for $22,000? I would hope like 20 gigs or something, but no, unfortunately, in the tradition of Canadian telecommunication companies screwing over its customers, Fido, the company that the man had serviced through, provided his phone with a whopping 700 megabytes of data. Yes, 700 megabytes. That's 0.031 megabytes per dollar. That's a crazy charge. The kid using the phone reportedly racked up this huge charge by streaming video on the device. Now in the man's defense, he did listen to the people at his local Apple store when he asked about roaming. They said to turn the phone into airplane mode, which would stop the phone from roaming. Unless you of course turn that back off. Remember that, it's one little switch in your setting that can cost you a whole bunch of money. The foolproof way to stop overage costs is to take out your SIM card. Boom! Once that's done, there's like literally no way to get overage costs because basically you just turned your phone into a fancy Wi-Fi only mini tablet kind of thing. Or the way that I found that works is if you have an unlocked phone, meaning you can use it on any network, just buy a traveler SIM card, then pop it in and boom, you have access to a network without the crazy overage charges. One last thing though that I would like to chuck in here, because Canada has some of the worst and overpriced cell phone costs in the world, people have asked companies to enable a data cap system. Basically, if you rack up, let's say a $200 cell phone bill, your phone would get cut off. Basically, you couldn't incur any more costs, and hey, it's a little expensive, but it's considerably cheaper than $22,000. The funny thing about this? Well, the big three, Rogers, Bell, and Telus, have said users don't want that. What? Yes, of course, you're completely correct. We love paying huge overage costs to you guys. That interesting topic was submitted by Julie McPhee on Twitter. Thanks, Julie. From that crazy story to a man who has made a living doing crazy things. David Copperfield is in the news today, not because he did some death-defying stunt, but because he was almost a casualty of a plane crash. David was on his way from Las Vegas to New York City to perform on the Today Show when his plane began to experience problems. And because we all live in the year 2013, David took to Twitter. His first tweet is about heading from Vegas to New York, but next, whoa, emergency landing, followed by everyone is okay, emergency landing in Illinois. So scary. Then, happy to be on the ground and safe, ready for the Act Today show. I'm glad to hear he's all right, though I'm surprised. David, why not just make the plane levitate? You know you can do that yourself. I'm kidding, of course. I'm happy to hear that he's all right. And one last thing I do have to say, why does a plane going in for an emergency landing have better in-flight Wi-Fi than my work? I think that said something there. As for information about the cause of the emergency landing on the plane, it appears that a strange noise was the cause. No information about what was making the noise has come out yet, but once again, I'm just happy to know that David and the others on the plane are all right. Also, David, I'd love to come and see your show, so um, 
call me. And last, I talked about this on Friday, and I even posted a Sims version of it myself, but I think it's time that we all come to terms with it. The Harlem Shake is coming to an end, or at least it should soon. Evidence of this is 15 gold miners from Australia were recently fired because they decided to record a Harlem Shake video deep underground. Apparently this is like a safety hazard or something, which okay, I can see that, but you don't need to fire them because of it. A warning, yes, but not fired. Whatever happened to like the three strikes rule? I suppose I guess that only applies to baseball. But this isn't the only Harlem Shake video that is bringing safety to question. Last week a Harlem Shake video was created on an aircraft that was flying over the Grand Canyon. This has raised a few red flags with the FAA. Once again, I would like to say warnings before firings, please. But that's just my take on it. And hey, if you want, you should totally check out my Sims 3 University Harlem Shake video I posted on my channel a few weeks back or last week, I can't really remember. Jumping back to the cell phone story, I wanna know, what is the most you've ever paid for a cell phone bill? And given the choice, would you want a cap on the amount that you could be charged? Tell me in the comments section below, or of course you can always let me know on my Facebook page, through Twitter, or on Google+. Links to all that and the other topics I talked about in today's episode in the description below, along with the always amazing subscribe button. So until next time, I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video today. You can of course check out more videos I create by clicking on them below. Check out now for the latest news happening in the world right now, Paradise Gaming for some fun gameplay videos, or of course my personal vlog channel to see what I'm like outside of my studio. Also, if you're interested in supporting the show and getting some new clothes for yourself, check out the store at thecurtisparadystore.ca. See you guys later.